yeah. coming up. Anything specific that you really want your, your team to kind of finalize and focus on heading into those last year? Well, we want to keep the momentum going. Uh, Got to clean up our transition defense a little bit, continue to rebound like we have, and, and just uh, I, I think this weekend we executed well offensively. So I think we're playing well right now. We just got to take that on the road one last weekend. You guys have talked about going to the NCAA tournament as your goal pretty much the entire season. Yep. Continuing to just inch forward, do you guys yeah. kind of start to see that this really could be a reality? Well, sure, I hope so. Yeah, I think uh, we obviously still need to do some more work. Uh, and these two games this weekend uh, are a great opportunity. Um, but, um, but yeah, I think it's okay to talk about our goals and, and, and what we're striving for. And, and now I think our, our players are really believing because it, it really is within their grasp. You've had to, you know, build your resume week after yeah. week after week. Does it feel like any more of a must-win type type vibe now, or have you felt like maybe under that kind of tournament pressure for a few weeks now? I, yeah, I think we realized the la uh, over the last few weeks that, uh, you know, we had something bigger that we were playing for, and we've not not that we didn't take the games before sure. any more seriously or less seriously, but um, you know, I think our players are really focused. They're dialed in. They they know what we're playing for. It's something tangible that they see ahead of them. And, and so, yeah, I, but I think everybody at this time of year is up their focus just a little bit more because, you know, whether you're playing out the string, so to speak, uh, you're playing for pride, uh, position in, in any kind of tournament, uh, you know, I think everybody ups their game just a little bit late. What's the story with Cal this year? And, uh, yeah. you know, they sort of they went to the uh, NCAA tournament last year, but obviously graduated a couple key players. Yeah. What, what do they got going for them? Uh, they have great talent. I mean, they really do. And I, and I think Coach Lindsey does an awesome job. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, it's just not clicking like it can, but they have the potential to turn it at any moment. I mean, they, they truly do have blue chip uh, basketball players. And so, um, you know, we, we, we can't let them, you know, get going at all because once they get that machine going and, and those, those players, uh, you know, uh, start really playing well, it, they're going to be tough to stop. You guys held Christine and Igwe pretty, uh, pretty far back yeah. last time you guys played him. Is, do you think you'll anticipate some kind of change in terms of their strategy to get her more involved? Yeah, and you know, she had a big weekend. Boy, she had, what, 30-something at Colorado on Sunday. So they're obviously finding ways to get her the basketball. Uh, she's everybody's focus when they play Cal. So, and, and she's still putting up numbers, which is, I think, a testament to her greatness, but uh, obviously the, you know, how, they're, uh, how they're playing her. So. Yeah, we'll uh, you know do a little bit of what we did well, and then try to correct some of the things we didn't do so well on our last time. How close is Jacinta to getting back to form? I think she's she's there. You know, she's shown um, you know some good moments. You know, I I, th I think sometimes we put a little pressure on her to offensively it's just not her game I, you know I liken her especially since she's an Australian we kind of liken her to Andrew Bogut you know he's not really an offensive guy on, on a great offensive team but what we need from her is uh, you know consistency on the defensive end and on the boards and if she can be a presence down there I think anything she gives us on the offensive end is a bonus so we just got to get her back to you know being confident at the defensive end she said that she doesn't really like to score I mean how unusual <laughs> is that and how does know. does that work well with with Jillian and, and just the combo of the two? Well, there are only so many touches and baskets to go around for inside players, but that's kind of unique. You don't hear that somebody uh, doesn't like to score very often. Uh, and that's okay to have that attitude. You know, you, you need all kinds. All kinds make a team. Not everybody can be the scorer. So, uh, like I said, if she can just give us a defensive presence uh, against the uh, the tall players in our conference, the you know, then 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 we're getting out of her what we need. How much do you think it helps you guys to have a strong traveling partner like Oregon State? Oh, critical. Um, if we're the second team that, that somebody's playing on a given weekend, they come in here f questioning themselves a little bit after they, you know, oftentimes get, get beat up pretty good up in Corvallis. And then, you know, sometimes maybe the better teams might overlook us perhaps if we're the first game of the weekend uh, looking ahead to, you know, somebody they, they – consider maybe more of a rival or somebody they're chasing so it can be a benefit but at the same time I think we're helping Oregon State you know yeah. teams can't just load up on them they have to, to prepare for us I was gonna say the UCLA game here I mean you probably took something out of them too I think we did yeah we made them play for the full 40 minutes and uh, and those kids logged a lot of minutes you don't have a lot of time to turn around you know with the way the schedule works in the Pac-12 so I don't think 
Scott's going to call me and thank me <laughs> for, uh, you know, their wins. But, uh, but yeah, I think uh, the two of us being better basketball teams, I think uh, we help each other. First time you guys played Stanford, were you expecting, did you game plan to see Erica McCall and then not having her play? Was that sort of a surprise to you guys? Uh, yeah, it was a surprise because it didn't, we didn't know until they started warming up when we saw her in street clothes. So, uh, yeah, but they're, all their posts are, are similar in that they're great rebounders. They're very active defenders. They're long. They can attack the basket. Um, so I think you prepare for them generally uh, the same. Uh, in the post, but she's a terrific player and, and uh, guaranteed, you know, she, she's she's going to have a heck of a weekend. With the way Maite has been playing the past couple weeks, do you think teams are starting to form a little different game plan around her, trying to, you know, pay a little more extra attention to her? I think so, but I think that's happened over the last month or so, uh, I think, it, which is a testament to how good she really is. I don't think, uh, maybe outside of Kelsey Plummet at Washington, I don't think there's a better player in the pick and roll game than Maite. And uh, as long as we can set good screens and as long as one of those screeners is Jillian, uh, you know, Maite's going to have some, some looks off there. But she's been so aggressive. Uh, she's really looking to score. I mean, she's, she's a pass-first point guard. That's her nature. But I think here in the last month or so, she's really looking to score uh, a lot more and attack the basket for, her, for herself. So it's made her doubly tough to guard. Okay, you guys. Thanks, Kelly.